Hey guys, it's Maddie. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. It's face tracking my thermostat. You the real star. <laughs> Please stop face tracking that. For today's video, like my camera was suggesting, today's video is all about thermostats and heat mats also. So today is a little bit different because I am doing a sort of experiment on three different popular types of heat mats to use for your reptiles. I'm going to be testing them to see just how hot they get when they are unregulated by a thermostat. So this is a question that I've kind of been curious about for a while and maybe you have been too. Just how hot is your heat mat getting if you don't have it hooked up to a thermostat? at. So a lot of times when you look at care sheets and even care videos on YouTube, you will see that people almost always recommend for most species of reptile, they need a heat source along with a couple other obvious things like water dishes and terrariums, substrate, and things like that. Oftentimes I see thermostats left out of those necessities and I think that a thermostat should always be a necessity when you are hooking up a heat source because it can quite literally save your reptile's life. So for today's video, I did two little experiments with three different types of heat mats that are all similar size and I plugged them in at the same time on a piece of plexiglass and waited an hour and monitored the temperature that they were getting up to unregulated within the hour and the results might surprise you. So here we have the three heat mats that I'm going to be testing today. I chose these three brands because I feel like they're the most popular heat mats that are used. This is the 12 watt Flukers heat mat, the 16 watt Zoomed heat mat, and the 16 watt Zilla heat mat. So I'm going to be plugging them in at the same time and constantly monitoring the temperature over the next hour. These three heat mats are completely unregulated and they're in open flow air. They're just sitting on top of a piece of plexiglass so that they don't burn the carpet or anything, but they're not sandwiched under anything. There's perfect airflow coming with no blockage over any of them and they're not even taped or stuck down. We're giving them a fair chance to not overheat with all the airflow that's going on. We'll just say that. So they are all plugged in now. It is 326. I'm using an infrared thermometer, which is just a heat gun basically, and just shooting it at the surface of the heat mat and you can see how fast that one's heating up. And then the last way that I'm going to be testing the heat mats is with an actual thermostat. So this has a probe on it and I'll be using the probe and setting it on each of them. And this thermostat in particular actually has an alarm that goes off when it gets over the specific amount, the maximum amount right here. So I've actually gone ahead and turned the alarm off because I know it's going to get over 93, so I've gone ahead and turned it off so it's not going off the entire video. So we are about five minutes in. I'm going to take the temp gun and read what each of the heat mats are at currently after five minutes. Okay, so the top of this one is hitting hot spots of 128, it looks like. And up. Oh, there was 131. So after five minutes, this one's hitting the top temperature of 131 degrees. Zoom ed is a little bit cooler. I think the hottest I saw was 110 or 111. Obviously there's hot and cold spots. So when I'm running it across the surface of the heat mat, it's picking up different temperatures because of the heat gradient that is across the entire mat. So I think the hottest I saw here, this one's definitely the coolest. It is also the lowest wattage out of all of the three. This is staying in like mid 90s for the most part, but getting up to 110 in some spots. So that is after five minutes. So it is 342 right now. I have the Inkbird probe underneath the Zilla heat mat lightly. It is reading 119 in the middle of the mat. Um, I've been shooting with a heat gun for the past, you know, like almost 20 minutes now and they are still gradually rising. 140. So obviously this is like a very dangerous temperature at this point for most reptiles to be sandwiched up against. It is, you know, we got 142 there for a second. At the top it's getting over 120, um, but it's more consistently probably around 110. And then here's the flukers, which again is a lower wattage than the other two, but similar in size. That's getting low 100s um, up to, there was 113 for a sec. All right, so it has been an hour. I'm going to go ahead and put these on the bottom of an unused terrarium and, and then read the temperature when I get home. The Zilla heat mat on the Inkbird thermostat is reading 135. I'm going to use the temp gun. Okay, so 146 I saw, 146.8. So that's after about an hour. Here's the Zoomed, 126. 
so 126 was the highest. And then here is the Flukers. Okay, so there was a spot of 118 there for a second. 119. So after about an hour, the Zilla heat mat got up to 146 degrees. The Zoomed got up to 126. And the Flukers got up to 119. So now I'm going to go and show you guys the shelf and the tank I'm going to be putting it on. I'm going to set it up and then we're going to wait and I will just let them heat up to their maximum capacity and come back and read the temperature after a couple of hours. So I'll show you what we're going to do now. So for the next part of the video, we are going to be putting the three heat mats underneath a empty 40 gallon terrarium and using digital probe thermometers to monitor them throughout a couple of hours and also using the infrared heat gun and testing the surface temperature of the glass underneath the substrate to see just how hot the heat mats made the glass within a couple of hours. Here is the primarily empty tank. I just have a few extra supplies in here. And I'll move those out just so there's no extra stuff on top of anything, even though ideally if you have an animal, you're going to have decor and enrichment in there. But for the sake of this, I'm just going to put substrate. This is just Aspen, it's new. I will show you what the shelf looks like. Kind of, you can see it back there. There's a metal grate on the bottom. You can look up and see my Kenyan sand boas tank and all of Harold's beautiful little tunnels under there. But you can see the tank is not touching anything. There is a slot where the heat mat will sit and not be in direct contact with the glass or sandwich against any kind of hard surface. So that's what it looks like exactly under here. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift this tank, put all of the heat mats under there and plug them in and then We'll go from there. All right, we are all set up. So just keep in mind that the temperatures that are read on this tank might be lower than they would be typically because there's not a 100% secure fit like there would be if I was adhering these permanently to the bottom of the tank. But since I want to use these heat mats other places regulated, I don't want to secure three heat mats obviously to the bottom of a 40 gallon. Got a digital probe thermometer on each heat mat and I'm going to go out to dinner and then come back and read it again with the heat gun. All right, so I am back and I have let the heat mats heat up to their full potential over the past few hours. I'm going to be reading the probe thermometers real quick and then using the heat gun right on the glass to see what the temperature is. So the first one is Zilla, second one is Zoomed, and third one is Flukers. So this is the Zilla heat mat. It is at 121.6 degrees. This is the Zoomed heat mat. It is at 120 degrees exactly. And this is the Flukers heat mat. It is at 108.5 degrees. So now I'm going to part the Aspen substrate to the side and use the heat gun right on the glass. Ouch. It's very, very hot. So that's the Zilla heat mat and at about 128 129 degrees and as you can see it's not directly on the glass but it's still very 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 hot to the touch moving on to the zoom ed 126 this is a brand new heat mat too this one has not been used before and then finally we will go on to the flukers about 109 i'm seeing there all right, so that is two different ways to measure the temperature with the thermometer and with the heat gun. They're both getting just about the same reading. And as you can see, the unregulated heat mat is extremely hot, way too hot to be in direct contact with most reptiles. So it is definitely, definitely, definitely a necessity for you guys to get a thermostat. So as you can see, the results of that are pretty amazing. The temperatures get extremely hot, a lot hotter than a lot of species need. Even if it wouldn't burn some monitor species, it is very, very dangerous for a lot of other species and can lead to permanent brain damage or serious burns. For animals that are more temperate, like corn snakes, temperatures like that can even kill them. So I think it is very important to get a thermostat if you are getting any kind of reptile or amphibian and hooking them up to a heat source to make sure that they are safe. Down in the description below, I have linked the three thermostats that I personally use. One of them you can get right now for $12, which is a really, really good price. 
for a thermostat, especially if you're spending the money on a reptile. You can spend a little bit of extra money to make sure that they are safe. I definitely think that it's worth $12 to make sure that my reptile isn't going to become severely burned or brain damaged or even die. I'm not trying to shame anyone that didn't know that this can happen or that doesn't have a thermostat currently. I'm just trying to make everyone aware that these are the kinds of things that can happen if you don't have a regulated heat source for your reptile. It can end very tragically and I would hate for anything to happen to any of my pets and I know that all of you would hate for something to happen to your own personal pet as well. Thank you guys so so much for watching this video. I hope you really enjoyed it and we're really able to learn a lot. It's face tracking my thermostat again. If you guys decide to do this experiment yourself, let me know. You can tweet at me or send me a DM on Instagram and see what your results were. Make sure that if you're doing this experiment, you don't have any of your animals around the heat mat while it is getting as hot as it possibly is because, of course, it can be dangerous. So thank you guys again for watching this video. And if you haven't already, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below because I make videos every single week with my animals. And I will see you guys it's tracking that. I'll see you guys next time.